In this video I will show you how easy it is to create consistent AI videos. Like these amazing videos made by Tokyo Jab. This clever and very creative creator uses two hacks to outsmart the AI and create high resolution realistic AI videos. He shared his knowledge in a reddit post which got over 500,000 views which is amazing. However, due to a well-known protest, the popular subreddits have gone dark for a while. Thankfully, Tokyo Jab was kind enough to share everything with me through many emails. But before we dive into that, let's have a look at some incredible videos that Tokyo Jab has made. This first image I really like because uh, it just really shows how consistent this is. Make sure to look at the left image because that will reveal the original video. Okay, let's go. Yeah, that is amazing. No flickering. There it comes. There's the original image. Wow, that is just really, really nice. The second one is really amazing as well. This is a close-up and it shows that there even the consistency does very well. So let's have a look. Look how sharp that is. Yeah, the eye a bit. But look, amazing. That's the original image. Wow, this one is really nice as well. And I want to give a big shout out to Tokyo Jap for his exceptional guidance in helping me understand look. his incredible method. Have a look around. Come in, come in. The reason this stands out for me so much is that it creates high resolution realistic video. Unlike other programs such as Stable Warp Fusion and Runway ML's Gen 1, which produce amazing videos, however, currently they are limited to digital graphics, animation, and anime style. Hopefully, this will change in the future. But for now, Tokyo Jab's temporal consistency method is the only image to image converter that I am aware of that can create realistic looking videos without flickering. Before I share the two hacks and the programs that Tokyo Jab is using, I want to let you know that I'll be splitting this up into two tutorial videos. This is because Tokyo Jab has spent the last three months refining his temporal consistency method. So, to make it easy for you to follow along, the first tutorial will be a step-by-step -step guide which covers only the basics of his method. In the second tutorial, we'll take a deeper dive into the breakthroughs and knowledge Tokyo Jab has gained over the last three months. And at the end of the video, I'll provide a sneak peek of what that is all about. Okay, let's start with the basics. Tokyo Jab uses well-known programs like Stable Diffusion and Epsin. And for the first hack, he relies on this free website. This clever hack allows him to achieve greater consistency and produce impressive results. So before we can apply this hack, we need to select a video and export all the frames in a 512 by 512 square format. For this, I went to pexels.com and found this beautiful colored woman. Inspired by Tokyo Jab's transformation from a white woman into a colored woman, I aim to reverse the process by turning this colored woman into a white woman. To further test this method, I will also transform a video of myself where I make funny faces into a Sylvester Stallone version because I want to see how well it will copy my facial expressions. After downloading the video, we have to export all the frames. You could do this in the video to PNG tab of a free website called sgif.com. But I prefer to do it in DaVinci Resolve because this is my main editing software. I have the studio version. But with the free version, you can do everything which is needed for this tutorial as well. So in Resolve, I have made a 512 by 512 timeline. I will position the frames as I want it. Then I'm going to make a fusion clip out of it. Now I go to the fusion tab, add a saver and choose the original 512 folder and name the first frame 0000.png. I have created this template with all the folders that I need for this project, which I would recommend you to do as well. Then go to the fusion tab at the top and click on render all savers. Now we need to select the four best keyframes. The keyframes should be the first and last frame, as well as two frames in between where something interesting is happening, like a head turn or any action. In my sequence, which has 74 frames, I choose frames 0, 25, 50 and 74 as my keyframes. So I copy those frames and put them in the four keyframes folder. Now let's open the free sprite sheet website that I mentioned before and create a grid from four images. This is Tokyo Jab's first hack the grid method. When we load this grid into stable diffusion, all images are created in the same latent space simultaneously, resulting in consistent and flicker-free images. Some experienced stable diffusion users might suggest using the temporal kit extension from Kiara Rouse, which automates the grid work for image to image in stable diffusion. However, Tokyo Jab has a different approach. He loads the grid image into the text to image tab 
and controls it with Stable Diffusion's control net. And this is Tokyo Jab's second hack, using text to image instead of image to image. By doing this, he can override the underlying video with prompting, ensuring greater consistency and fewer flickering issues. And his impressive and consistent videos show the power of his method. I mean, look at it. It looks incredibly sharp and clear and it appears so lifelike. I haven't come across any other AI that can create this realistic style. So on the Sprite Seed Packer website, that's a difficult word, we leave the setting JSON has and layout compact as they are, but we change padding to zero pixels. Now click on clear to remove the images. And now I drag my images inside the transparent box and then click on the download PNG button. This should make a 1024 by 1024 grid with four keyframes. Now we will use this grid in Stable Diffusion. I'm using the automatic 1111 version locally on my computer with the ControlNet extension installed. If you're new to Stable Diffusion, I recommend watching this video from Sebastian Kamp as it also explains how to install the ControlNet extension. You also have the option to use Run Diffusion, which is an automatic 1111 cloud-based service. With Run Diffusion, you don't need to install anything on your computer, but it does come with a cost starting at 50 cents per hour. In Stable Diffusion, I will go to the Text to Image tab, because this is Tokyo's tab's second hack. I am going to set the sampling method to Euler A, the width and height to 1024. Let's start with a sampling step of 20 in the creation process. Later on, we'll increase it to 66 for the final image. Choose a CFG scale between 3 and 7. Going higher than that may affect consistency. I'll go with a scale of 7. Open the control net extension and click on enable. Also select pixel perfect. Now choose line art as the control type and line art realistic as the preprocessor and leave the model to line art. Leave the control mode at the bottom at balanced and leave the resize mode to crop and resize. Now drag your grid image into the control net unit zero box. Now let's select the right models to create a realistic look. Tokyo Jab uses three models, Art and Eros, Reality Vision and Cine Diffusion. To install these models, we need to visit civet.ai. I provide all the necessary links in the video description, as of all the other links that I'm using in this video. For the Art and Eros model, we'll download the Eros pruned safe tensors file. For the Realistic Vision V2.0 model, we'll choose the V2.0 no VAE file. And for the Cine Diffusion model, we'll take the V3 model. Now go to your download folder and copy the save tensors files. Now navigate to your Stable Diffusion folder, go to Models and then open the Stable Diffusion folder. Paste the copied models in this location. All these models require a specific VAE, which is a variational autoencoder. In very simple terms, this is a filter that will make your images look better. It's convenient that all the models used by TokyoJap share the same VAE, so we only need to download one. Install the downloaded file in the following folder. Now we have to configure some settings in Stable Diffusion. Go to the Settings tab, click on the Stable Diffusion tab, set the VAE to the one we have just installed. There's no need to switch between VAE models because this VAE model remains the same for all 1.5 models. And all the models that TokyoJap is using are from the 1.5 model, which is perfect. Click on apply settings and then reload the user interface. Now that we have finished the setup, I'm going to choose the Art and Eros model and begin working on the prompts. TokyoJap shared with me that he includes light glare on film and light reflected on film in his negative prompts. This helps to get consistent colors and lightning lighting across the frames. To further refine the negative prompts, I used the one recommended by the creator of the Realistic Vision V2.0 model, which can be found on the Civit AI website. Let's copy and paste this prompt into the negative prompt section. For the normal prompt, I followed the recommendation for the Realistic Vision V2.0 model as well. Although there's no specific reason, I found through experimentation that these just work very well for me. Now I will replace the word subject with white woman. With all the settings prepared, we can now click on the generate button. It will hopefully generate consistent and flicker free images. Wow, that is looking good. If I look closely, I notice that Stable Diffusion tries to create teeth in the mouth, but the colored woman I'm using has her mouth closed. So in the negative prompts, I will add open mouth and teeth. And in a normal prompt, I will include closed mouth and closed lips. Let's hope that this will fix that problem. I am really happy with the result. 
Yes, it looks much better. Let's create a few more and then compare them to choose the best one. So I think this one is the best. So I've copied the seed and used it to create a version with 66 sampling steps. By setting a fixed seed, I can make sure that Stable Diffusion will create the same image and generate an image with much more detail and hopefully more quality. Now we can export this file and divide it into four separate 512 by 512 images using SGIF's Sprite Sheet Cutter. We choose the file by dragging it into this box and then click on the upload button. Then we scroll down and select by tile size. Then set the width and height to 512 by 512. After that, click on the cut button to separate the images. Now we will scroll down and click on the download frames as zip button. Extract the files from the zip and place them in your keyframes folder for ebsyn. Now make sure to change the file names to match the original keyframes names. If you don't match the original keyframe names, then you're gonna be uh, in a lot of trouble in ebsynth because it doesn't know where to put it. Once you've done that, upload them into ebsynth. If you haven't installed ebsynth yet, go to the website, click the download button and install the application. Once installed, open the ebsynth folder in your installation directory and double click the ebsynth.exe file to open it. Now open the folder with all the prepared files for ebsynth. Now drag the original 512 folder into the video tab and the 4 keyframes folder into the keyframes tab. Click the first select button and choose the output 1 folder and click select folder. Repeat this process for keyframes 2, 3 and 4. In the advanced tab set mapping to 20. Leave the flicker at 1.0 and set diversity to 1000. Click the run all button and you will see ebsynth creating all the images for you. If you have Adobe After Effects installed on your computer, you can click the export After Effects button. As I have only a very old 5.5 version, this doesn't work for me. In Resolve, I dragged the output folders in here and then what I did, I just opened the first clip and then I looked through the clips to see where I could stitch them up best. So here I saw in the first clip that there is a problem at frame 12 with the eye. So for the first clip I only took the first 11 frames. And I did it with all the other frames. Then I went to the effects folder and took a cross dissolve. And I just put this between the frames. And uh, yeah, well, now let's have a look at the outcome. I'm very curious. That is not bad. Hardly any flickering. I, I really like it. This is... Tokyo Jab, man, you brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thanks, thanks for sharing this. Let's proceed to create the Sylvester Stallone version of my video, using a file that already incorporates face swapping with an AI defect tool to replace my face with Stallone's. And now I want to refine it in Stable Diffusion and EBSynth. So in Stable Diffusion, I'm going to leave everything as it is, and I'm only going to change White Woman into Sylvester Stallone. So from these two results, I think the right one is the best one. So let's see what ebsynth does with this. But before that, I want to give you a sneak preview of what is going to be coming in this second tutorial. In there, we will explore techniques to create longer videos by incorporating more keyframes in bigger grids. And we'll learn how to create grids with a 9x16 resolution, ideal for YouTube Shorts, Instagram videos and TikTok videos. This time, I want to transform a video of a speaking person. So that's why we will be using multiple control net models, adding open pose and depth maps to control net. Considering the increased demand on the computer, I'll also demonstrate how to install the tiled VAE extension so you can spread out the load on the GPU. So also somebody with only a four or eight VRAM gigabytes graphic cards can do the job. Okay, now let's have a look at the Sylvester Stallone video. There we go. That doesn't look too bad. It doesn't have exactly all the expressions that I have, but I'm sure we can fix this in this second tutorial. Once it's ready, you can click on it here. And one more time, thank you Tokyo Jab for helping me so much. I recommend everybody to go and look at his Instagram account and look at his amazing, fantastic videos. They're just incredible. 